Bob Thompson, consultant, Bob Thompson Sports Media, also former Fox president, CEO, with us on 365 Sports. It's been a, a while. Bob, things have kind of slowed down unless uh, someone's trying to throw spaghetti noodles against the refrigerator, see if it sticks on some things. But um, I, I reached out to you yesterday afternoon about this Big Ten story with some of the loose ends. When you read it or saw it and digested it, what, did, what came out of it for you? Uh, first of all, thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure. Um, you know, reading the story, a couple of things jumped out at me. First of all, I, I think I mentioned there's been rumors about this running around for a while that there might be some unsolved issues, but that's not unusual. I mean, these are very complicated deals, and they take some time to paper. You know, would I would like to have more of those details figured out before I announce? Absolutely. Is it the end of the world and unfixable? No, not at all. So you've got a couple of things to look at. <clears throat> the champ game is a little, um, that apparently it's gone from Fox to NBC, you know, given that Fox was supposedly involved in all the negotiations. That seems a bit of a surprise. But you got to remember that that's money that's just going to be replaced. I mean, NBC is going to pay it instead of Fox. So that, you know, that money is kind of fungible. One half, one pocket, right? You know, left pocket, right pocket. The other <laughs> $25 million seems to be something related to probably lost inventory uh, during the pandemic because remember the big 10 didn't play a bunch of their games. And so Fox probably had some cure period where the big 10 had to pay them back at, by a certain point. So these are just, you know, those are one time charges. So it's, it's not going to happen every seven years of the deal. So take that off the top and that's all very solvable. The tolerances issue, which is the night games, now that's been around for a long time. And so, Anybody who wasn't aware of that hasn't been paying attention to the rights deals that have been done in the Big Ten over the years. Um, so, you know, is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it uh, unfixable for Tony Petit going forward? No. Is it uh, hundreds of millions of dollars? No. It's going to be $5 million, $70 million total, which if you look at it, is 1% of the total deal. $7 billion. So I, I wouldn't get too upset. I think if I'm Fox, I'm upset if Kevin Warren kind of went off the, went off the reservation here and went and did this deal without telling them what was going on and didn't tell NBC what was going on with the tolerances and the night game. So that's just something that's going to have to be, be taken into consideration. But I think with the amount of money out there, a ter terrific motivator to get some people to play some night games. And we're only talking about four games. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's the whole schedule. So I, it's kind of not comical. I mean, it, it's unfortunate that it's kind of gotten the reaction it did. I don't know. Has anybody seen the Big 12 spine deal? You know, my guess is that deal's not done yet either. They take some time. But uh, they like to usually get them out and announce before they get leaked. And so, you know, kind of is what it is. And that's where we are right now. The um, the night games thing is that more just the the co like the the schedulers and the people who are just used to something being mad because they're they're really not going to see any of that money right I mean it, it's all uh, going somewhere else so for them it's it's probably a little bit more of a headache a little bit yeah, it is and uh, you know there's, it's the cold weather is certainly one thing the the local communities and how they handle games and what has to be done as it relates to putting on a game in some of these college towns is, is difficult. Yeah, you know, there's a pretty simple way to fix this. You just get, you know, you've got like five or six teams within an hour of a dome uh, in Michigan, in Indiana, uh, in Minnesota. You're going to have two teams within the uh, hour, hour and a half of the Chicago Bears new dome. Create a dome series, you know, play some games in the dome and then combine that with a couple of games in, in, in L.A., at uh, USC, UCLA, and you've, you've filled your four games with, with really no problem. So, Bob, was this a, a situation that Tony Petiti, you think, was startled by when he walked into it? Or is this just kind of business as usual? Hey, there's going to be some hangups. There's going to be some things that weren't exactly, you know, cemented. And uh, that's part of, you know, him walking in and, and kind of cleaning up the rest of the job. Do you think that was, you know, anticipated on his part? Or is this something that is kind of jarring for a guy taking over the job? No, I'm pretty sure he would have been aware of it. You know, I'm sure he asked where, where the TV deal stands and probably would have asked to see it. Uh, I know I would have. 
And, you know, so I, I, I again, I think he, he's somebody who has walked in this world and knows these people that, that we're talking about here at, at the various networks. So he's very comfortable there. And I, I really don't think he'll have a problem get, getting some resolution. One question that I saw pop up quite a bit in uh, some of the replies to uh, to the original tweet was, how would Fox not know about the championship game promise if they were there, in theory, helping the discussions along the way? Um, because my guess is they weren't there when that conversation <laughs> happened. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I mean, look, here's, here's one of the things that, that I had, you know, kind of come up with that reading Pete's article and that was that you know it appeared that the deal might have been Fox CBS and Amazon and then there was some pushback from coaches and ADs about the amount of, of streaming and and that prime time Saturday night game being a streamed game and so maybe Kevin you know went to NBC and maybe Kevin without Fox talked to NBC about a deal and in order to get them up to that level that they that Amazon potentially was prepared to pay, he had to throw in a few things. And so thinking about this, the Friday night or the uh, November games, that kind of went out the window to get to the number. And, and the champ game that was currently one of their partners, including the partner who owns the right, you know, through the Big Ten Network, was thrown in because I assume Fox had multiple multiple games with, you know, maybe they had three and everybody else had two. I can't remember how it worked, but, um, you know, they threw, threw uh, an MB, uh, champ game to NBC to get to that final number. And, you know, maybe Fox finds out about it after the fact, but, you know, I can't imagine Fox complaining about the deal if they were there when the deal happened. They don't want those handful of games at night in prime time to be like Rutgers against Nebraska, do they? No, you wouldn't really want that. I mean, that's you're going to want to showcase your, your best teams at prime time. I mean, it, yeah, a couple of things. Number one, there's less. You're up against less games uh, in that window, whether it's you know 7:30 Eastern or 10:30 Pacific. You know, there there there's certainly less competition in those two windows than than the daytime afternoon window. So you you don't want to put your best stuff forward. And I think everybody will agree to play. I mean, again, it's it's four games, so at max. You're looking at eight teams, and you've got to figure that you know the two of them, two of them aren't a big issue in UFC UCLA. So it's you know six teams to get affected every every three years. You know you play once every three years. Bob Thompson, former Fox CEO, president with us now, a consultant also with Bob Thompson Sports on 365 Sports. Bob, the uh, ESPN probably um, will have their direct to consumer. Uh, product ready in 25 or 26. Do you think that will gut cable? No. no. <laughs> I, I don't. I think uh, a couple of things. Um, you know, I don't know what everybody's viewing habits are, but I watch a lot more than just sports. You know, I've got CNBC playing in the background a lot of the time during the day, and I you know, watch a variety of things, not just sports. Um, if, I, if, if ESPN goes streaming, I mean, I've going to still have it on my direct TV package. Hopefully my, my direct TV package might be a little cheaper because ESPN is going to have to adjust some of these prices to the cable operators if they're going to compete with them. Mm. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's going to take a couple of years. They got to work through all the cable c- contracts. They're going to have to work through all the rights agreements with the, you know, with the various suppliers that they have so that they have that ability to go, you know, direct the consumer with the product. And they, you know, most of the deals they've been signing has some rights, but it's not necessarily all their rights. So um, I don't think it kills cable. I think it's got cable to take a hit. But, you know, at the current rate, it's cables in like 75 million homes. At some point, I would expect, and, you know, other people said this too, the current rate of board cutting, you're looking at 2025, 2026, where you're going to be at about 55, 50 million homes. And that's that's probably the point where, you know, ESPN takes a look where you've got half the homes have cable and the other half don't. Um, they've made a lot of money off the bundle for a lot of years. So the last thing they want to do is, you know, put it to bed any earlier than they have to. So I really think it will continue. Um, the cable business will continue. 
And the other thing is people don't realize that you're buying these streaming services. Right now, you're, you're taking advantage of what's called an introductory price because these guys are losing a lot of money. And they can't continue to lose a lot of money and be successful in the streaming business, be successful at all. So they're going to have to adjust their prices. And then as the prices get adjusted and you're paying more what the, the value that you're getting for out of these streaming services, um, you're going to be up and around and beyond possibly what you're paying for your bundle cable package right now. Plus, you got to throw in you know the internet piece. And if you're getting your internet from the cable guys, it's a lot more expensive if you just buy internet alone without the package, you know, without the video package. And so they're going to ding you there as well. So I really don't think it's going to, you know, I saw the article from Barrett and I don't, <clears throat> I don't totally buy it, but um, you know, cable business is going to take, going to have some pain, but I don't think it's going to go away just because ESPN streams. Why for people who don't know, why are the streamers losing so much money right now? Well, it, they're just, there is this arms race to try and produce as much money, you know, produce as much content as you could with the idea being you're going to attract, you know, more, more viewers that way and more subscri- more subscriptions that way. And, you know, it, it's a tried and true approach to, to selling subscriptions. I remember when I first started selling cable TV door to door, we had to deal with twenty nine ninety five a month and, you got all four pay services and it was, you know, three, three, three or four months. And, you know, then the price went up a bit. And boy, you know, it was great until people realized they actually had to pay for all this stuff. And, and, and then they, you know, it got real, <laughs> real fast. So I, you know, trying to amass enough content to attract enough subscribers has been their goal. And I think there's already become some, uh, sanity has come to the marketplace. I think you're now, it's Wall Street is less about how many subs did you add, uh, your streaming services, as opposed to how much you're losing and how quickly that is going towards a profit. Bob, I had somebody want me to ask you this question. You have what the main games, the Big Ten, certain networks have them, uh, obviously with um, Fox and CBS and what they have. Do you ever see college football going to, for example, those primetime games in November? Would the Big Ten or the networks ever look at flexing those games? Um, you know, it, they, they kind of have a flexibility in, in certain cases, not for the primetime games, but just on a weekly basis uh, with the 6 and 12-day windows. Uh, when the selections are actually made as to the start times of the game. It's a different thing when you um, have, you know, conference by conference has different stipulations of what you can do at, at night, what days you can play besides Saturday, um, things like that. So I think uh, they're pretty comfortable picking in advance uh, from special dates and prime time. And the schools prefer that. And I think certainly the communities and the fans do as well. They have enough problems just with the six and 12, 12 day picks. Uh, the, the flex schedule would introduce a whole different, um, whole different group of problems. And I, I really would be surprised to see that. I did see that the NFL just agreed that, mm-hmm. uh, flex on Thursdays twice a year, 28 days out, um, as a test. And so we'll see how often that, how often that actually happens. Um, but I think for college, it's pretty much handled just by the, the six and, and 12 day picks. Yeah, the, the players are going to hate that. Even 28 days yes. out, they're still going to yeah. hate it, which might be what they negotiate out of the next CBA so that the NFL gets what they really want because they, they made them mad about something else. Very possible. Yeah. Bob, what do you think about the the NFL going on this? The, speaking of the NFL, the one streaming playoff game on Peacock. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting. I don't know. I think last time around it was on, uh, who was it on? I can't remember, but it went, it went for uh, about $15 million left. So I'm sure whoever that was didn't want to renew the deal. They probably had some first rights. And so I think for Peacock, it's great. You know, they have a, they have an NBC game as well. And you probably will see a, a 
a, a slightly heightened level of promotion <laughs> of the Peacock game following on, on following the NBC game. So, um, you know, I think for the NBC or for the NFL, they're trying to, you know, see if it, if, uh, it sells subscription, you know, and that's, that's part of the game when it comes to streaming, you know, it does your product drive subscriptions and that's the, the whole discussion about Amazon not having, you know, the quite the viewership reach or, and, and, and viewership numbers that Fox had in the prior years for Thursday night football. That's, it's, that's not necessarily what Amazon's goal is. Amazon's goal is to sell prime subscriptions and then get people to buy paper towels, you know? So, uh, and I think with, with Peacock, it's the same thing. You know, the whole idea is to get people into the Peacock, um, you know, uh, platform. And that if you're going to have something that's going to get people to move, certainly having a, a playoff game um, would be one of the things that you would think would kind of move the needle. Bob, I saw a few people uh, you know, ask you questions about the sizzle and then fizzle that was the ACC and uh, their situation coming out of meetings where on day one there were some schools that were clearly you know, talking and won some change, and 24 hours later everything had, had basically calmed down. Just How did you take all that, especially I you know, saw your responses like, oh, I'm sure they'll just get out of that 16 years remaining, you know, 13 years <laughs> remaining on their deal. That'll be no problem. But what, what were your thoughts when you saw all that bubbling up last? Last week well i think there's certainly some some posturing going on so that the you know certain number of the schools left you know no doubt in anybody's mind that they're not happy with their current situation uh whether they're they're trying to send a message to the acc and and, and the commissioner I, that you know phillips knows the problems they have he, he doesn't need a message I, it's almost more like we're, we're sending this to our fans and it's darn it you know we're sick of this and we're not going to take it anymore and you know, it, it, talking about the, um, you know, redistribution of, of revenue, um, I, I mean, I can understand for um, things like CFP appearances, NCAA basketball credits, things like that. That makes, that makes some sense. But it, it, even if you put that together, it's still not going to get you close to where the SEC and the Big Ten are at. So all, you, all you've basically done is now you pissed off a couple of the other schools who – who prefer the equal revenue sharing. And so I, it didn't surprise me. I mean, I've looked at the grant rights. Everybody looked at the grant rights and it's, it's a tough one, you know, and it was written up for, for that reason. I mean, it was done at the time when schools were leaving and, you know, ESPN was trying to get a, you know, start a network or the ACC wanted ESPN to start a network and they needed to have the certainty that this conference was going to be around long enough for them to re- recoup that investment. You drop a couple hundred million dollars putting a network up on the air. You you want to be sure that those teams are going to be there at least long enough for you to you know get your re, recoup your investment. Hence the the long term deal till twenty thirty six or whatever it is. And there's some very specific you know some very onerous things like okay fine you go you pay the exit fee but we still own your right mm-hmm. so you're not really bringing anything to the new conference. So I you know that a lot of it was to me a, a, a lot about nothing but it, it wasn't a surprise given the the talk that we'd heard out of a variety of schools out there in, on the, in the east coast is it true that they took basically the grant of rights uh, agreement of the big 12 and copied and pasted it for themselves you know i don't know they if you read them they all look very similar so I don't know. Maybe there was one law firm that did them all, but um, they're, <laughs> they're they're not they're not significantly different, and um, some are are a bit stronger than others. The, the ACC is the longest and and has the most stringent um, clauses of all of them. That that I'm pretty comfortable saying. All right, on Kevin Warren, and obviously there's some T's that weren't crossed and I's that weren't dotted. What was he? a bull in the China shop, so to speak, uh, during this time when they were pounding this contract out? I mean, that's, that's possible. He, he might've overpromised, And then, um, when he couldn't, you know, it's a, it, and it's say, if I'm correct in the Amazon part, couldn't, uh, wasn't acceptable to, you know, certain portions of the conference. You know, he might have got out over his skis a little bit, and he had to figure out a way to, you know, kind of walk it back and hopefully recoup everything. And that's 
you know, that's possible where, um, you know, some things kind of fell through the cracks, but, um, uh, that that's all I can think. I, you know, again, given the setup of how those rights are sold, you know, through BTN and with Fox as a partner, um, it's, you know, inconceivable to me how some of these things could happen without Fox knowing. So that, that's just the thing that's a little suspicious to me. And I haven't really had any significant discussions with any of my friends at Fox about it, but, um, you know, you still hear the rumors. When you hear or, or see someone reporting that a network, a linear network, for example, whether it's ESPN or Fox, are out of negotiations with, let's say, the Pac-12 because they're the ones that are trying to figure it out, does that mean they're out until they're not because they might get a, a better deal and whatever they might end up paying a conference? Yeah, I, I, we never used to say we were out. And I, you know, in fact, and I don't think you've seen anybody at Fox say they were out of the Pac-10. You always want somebody. You always want the guys looking over their shoulder mm-hmm. in hopes that you know someone might, you know, make a mistake or overpay. And that's just less money they have to buy something else with. So, but you're never out until it's announced and your name's not in the press release. So. I, I don't think that this whole, some of these things going around that, you know, oh, ESPN's out. It's, you know, maybe they haven't talked in a while, but they, they could always get back in by picking up the phone. So, you know, I was, I was down in, in Scottsdale when they had the Fiesta Bowl meetings. And, you know, there was meetings going on all over the place. You know, I saw the Fox guys. I saw the ESPN guys. Big 12 was there. Pac-12. Everybody was there. So there's, there's always discussions going on. So, it, you know, I, ne- I never say never on this stuff. And it, it, when people tell you they're out and they're 100% out, you know, it, unless it to me comes from somebody at ESPN with a, you know, three letter title after the name, like CEO or something like that, I don't buy it. You know, I, the, the, there's just too much stuff that can be funneled to people from people who don't really know what's going on. I mean, funneled to, to writers or whatever, too. It could be funnel to them. And, you know, like I said, it's it's never really over until, like, there's an announcement and you're not in it. One final thing. Have you ever seen so much angst, frustration, finger pointing, picking sides, drawing a line in the sand, as you've seen during the renegotiation of conference uh, TV deals the last two to three, like, I guess, last year or two? No. I mean, it, 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 people... I, I, very seldom did anybody ever ask me what was going on. And, you know, part of the reason is you got to remember for other than I think part of the SEC deal and part of the big 10 deal or most of the big 10 deal, a lot of these deals were 12 and 13 years. So there's nothing to talk about for a very long time. And in that time, things like, you know, Twitter came about and Instagram and all the social media things and, and just sports media in general became something that was, you know, talked about a lot more than it ever had been. But yeah, it's, it's very surprising to me. And no, I've never seen anything like this. What's going on in the last couple of years? I, I can uh, truly say it was never that way back in my day. Bob, thanks as always for your time. I hope your golf game is well. All right, thanks, guys. Thank Have you. A good week. Bob Thompson, former Fox Sports president, CEO. Uh, his takes on the uh, 